What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we head to Monaco for round 7 of 2026 in F1 Manager. If you missed last time out in Imola, well unfortunately, well fortunately maybe for you, but unfortunately for us we had a bit of a poor result. We had a bit of a muck up on strategy, we had bad pit stops and there was a mistake from Ocon as well so we only managed to finish 8th and 9th which to be fair with how we are on the grid is probably whereabouts we should be but of course when you've had a couple of podiums already and a couple of good results and a fourth in Baku on top of that we're maybe thinking a little bit ahead of ourselves in trying to get up that grid but with Monaco comes a new opportunity to try and get some more points on the board and hopefully we will do just that I'm going to go get the cars ready. We've got a new front wing going on the car as well for both drivers. So fingers crossed that makes a difference as well. As always, folks, if you do enjoy the series or if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to huge leave a huge, big, juicy like on the video and hit that subscribe button as we are now well on our way to 1,000 subscribers. So, as I said before, let's get into qualifying and see where we're going to start the Monaco Grand Prix. So here we are then folks, we've finished qualifying, we've got the cars ready and the best we could pull out at Monaco is an 8th position with Pierre Gasly. His quickest lap time was a 1.10.3 which would get us to about, well, it'd get us probably exactly where we are really in terms of lap times. Um, Ocon didn't have a great time of it on the, on the Monaco track either. He's down in the bottom five as well, so there's going to be a lot of work that had to be done in Monaco if we're going to get something good out of this. Our cornering performance in slow speed corners just isn't good enough, and I think if you're going to win a Monaco Grand Prix, you need to have that. That is essential in Monaco. So, yeah, struggles are going to be apparent. I think today we need to finish top eight to keep the chance of, of that bonus going as well because we do have a sponsor objective of hitting five top eight finishes in a row. And Pierre is obviously right bang on that. So hopefully we can keep those people behind and maybe get our noses in front of one or two people at the start of the race. And maybe a mistake comes from one or two of the guys in front of us. Again, mistakes are few or far between in 2026. Everyone seems to be driving pretty well so far. Um, but again, we've got work to do and we need a bit of luck to go our way, I think, if we're going to get some big points in Monaco. So here we go then, folks. It's the most historically and probably the biggest race on the F1 calendar in terms of status, and that is Monaco. So let's see what we do early on as Gasly already in a fight with Stroll for eighth position, but manages to hold on and get in front of the Aston Martin driver, and he's chasing down Perez now. Let's see what people have done in terms of strategy. Real mix of strategy here. Hard tyres, soft tyres, medium tyres. We'll be interested to see if people go for a one-stop or a two-stop. On that end, we are going for a one-stop with Ocon and a two-stop with Gasly. Trying to give Gasly two stints of softs to try and give him as much pace as possible. As Ocon makes a couple of early overtakes there and he gets himself up into 16th. So hopefully a good sign of things to come. But we get to the end of the first lap and Gasly holds on to 8th and continues to push onto the back of Perez. And we're up to lap five, and we've stayed in a pretty similar position. We're chasing down Perez, who's dropped, been dropped back, actually, by Joe, of all people, um, in the Alpine. And, yeah, we're about half a second back on Perez, still half a second or so, varying between half a second to a second in front of Stroll, depending on what part of the circuit we're on. Ocon's within his own little bubble of about a second or so in front and behind of both De Vries and Sainz. So, yeah, we've... We've settled into where we are now, and this is what usually happens at Monaco, where you stay in a relatively similar position unless you can try and pick your moments to push and try and get in front of people at certain points. So, yeah, let's see if we can create some opportunities with Gasly um, and see what Ocon can do with the rest of the race. So DRS opens up. We're looking to go down the inside of Perez, but he defends that really well. We've got the tyre advantage, but Perez is just sitting that car in the middle of the track as you would expect him to. And he holds on for now. But again, putting the pressure on where we can with Gasly. Let's see if he can make an overtake sooner rather than later. So last race, we were getting frustrated by De Vries with Gasly. And this race, it's De Vries frustrating Ocon. Ocon trying to find a gap somewhere on this track to make an overtake. And trying to stick as close as possible so that when that DRS opens, 
We can try and get a bit of a pace advantage, but of course his teammate Ricardo keeping De Vries in DRS himself. So nothing happening just yet. So the frustration continues for Ocon. So here we go then. Gasly trying to make another overtake on this DRS. He's got the DRS open. But Perez holds on to fight another day. And he's going to have ERS to go. But again, Perez camping it, bang in the middle of the track. And it's going to be a long day at the office, I think, for Gasly if uh, he can't get past Perez. Because I think we'd be able to get in front of Joe. But unfortunately, we're just not, we just don't have that last little extra bit of pace to get in front of the Ferrari driver. And Perez is an experienced driver we know and knows how to defend. So... Yeah, fortunately the gap over Stroll is in and around that two second mark, so not too threatened by him at the moment. But again, there's a long way to go. We're only 12 laps into a 78 lap race, so long way to go. So we've got to a particular point of the race now, 13 laps in. Ocon trying to make more moves, but he's not getting in front of De Vries. De Vries being frustrated now by Drogovic, who's been overtaken by De Vries', De Vries teammate Ricardo, And... That's why maybe uh, De Vries is trying to find a way through so he can get back to being defended or essentially pulled along by Ricardo, but it's not happening for either ourselves or De Vries just yet. And Gazi's now dropped back on Perez to about two seconds and Stroll is starting to make inroads on that gap that we once had over him. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting rest of the race. Joe's now actually up to fifth. He's just overtaken Russell as well, so... All to play for still, but it's going to be a long race for us, I think. <laughs> Once again, Gazi trying to make an overtake into the sh into that chicane, but nothing doing at the moment. Again, just got to stay patient, try not to go for too much too soon, but again, he's still showing good pace here, Gazi. There's an overtake here if he can get that opportunity. So we've got Ocon chasing down Drogovic now, who's been overtaken by De Vries. DRS is open, he goes down the inside and he moves up to 15th. So finally, an overtake for Ocon to celebrate after those couple of early overtakes early on. Can he get back up to De Vries and Ricardo? The pace in the car suggests he can, but then the trick is to try and get that overtake. So we'll see what he can do in these coming laps. Ocon now trying to get in front of De Vries, going into the chicane, goes down the inside, and he's made it stick. What an overtake! incredibly brave there from Ocon and he manages to get in front of De Vries finally 22 laps in and we've made a bit of a breakthrough so we move up to 14 can we get Ricardo in these next few laps we'll have to wait and see but good strong brave overtake in there from Ocon I don't know many people that would have the uh, character shall we call it to go for it in that chicane but he made it stick and hopefully more positions to come so Ricardo has just pulled out the way as Ocon was chasing him down and we're now up into 13th. Gasly's getting ready and pushing on this lap to try and open up the gap to him and Stroll and get onto this first pit stop as quickly as possible. But yeah, this is what we expected. This is what you expect from Monaco. Not much action, not a lot of overtakes. So yeah, let's keep pushing and see if we get onto the back of Sergeant with Ocon and keep chipping away at those guys in front of us. So yeah. Um, Gazi now comes in for his pit stop and of course the quicker the pit stops here the better for us because that will keep us in front as we go for a 2.8 pit stop so yeah that's pretty much bang on average what we like to see so Gazi comes out in 13th and stays ahead of Piastri and we'll see what happens when Stroll comes in eventually for that pit stop and Sargent comes in for his pit stop just as we got to within a second of him and we move up into 10th. A big 10 second gap between us and Stroll though. I don't necessarily think we're going to close any time down on that. We're keeping De Vries behind us for now. And again, we're just trying to eke out some more of these laps on these tyres to try and get into a position. I might change strategy here because Ocon does have two or three spare sets of fresh softs to use. And of course, with the gaps being the way they are, we'd be able to utilize those i think um with the rest of the race so yeah we're in a decent position and we're cut pushing into you know under 10 seconds on stroll so yeah certainly lots to play for as gasly is two and a half seconds behind his teammate as gasly makes an overtake on his teammate and ocon gets ready to come in for his first pit stop still a few laps to go for the official strategy we were going for 
but I think we need to go for a bit of a, a bit of a change if we're going to maybe get some pace out the cars. And now Gasly's task is to try and cut down this time between himself and the guy that was chasing down in Stroll. Much fresher tyres, he can certainly do it. And Ocon has once again been let down by the pit stop crew with a seven second pit stop time. Thankfully, he doesn't drop that far back in terms of where he was. He's only a few places further back, but he's got some work to do if he's going to make the most of these new sets of soft tyres that he's got. So yeah, let's see what he can do chasing down Sergeant And Gasly now down to about eight and a half seconds on Stroll. He's continuing that climb up the grid again. So we're getting close to the halfway point of the race now. We're about five laps off that particular halfway mark. And Gasly has cut that time down to Stroll pretty quickly. He's under three seconds now. Um, Stroll's probably pitting in the next lap or two. By the looks of it, Stroll's going for a one-stop strategy. He's on very used mediums right now. And he's probably going on the hards next. So... It's going to be in the balance whether or not we can beat Stroll. But again, if we could keep chipping away at this time over the next lap or two, then we've certainly got a chance of doing that. Um, and again, I think eighth is really the maximum we can hope for here. Bottas having a bit of a pit stop issue. And we actually managed to get in front of Valtteri. So job well done on Gasly for keeping the pace up. So Ocon himself, he's caught up to... Well, he's got signs in front of him at the minute. Who's on the used hards. And of course, with Ocon being on newer softs, he's made that overtick pretty quickly. And he moves himself up into 14th. And he goes into that turn one. Where if there's going to be an overtake, that's the most likely place, I think, on the track. And we've made it stick. So up to 14th, Ocon goes. And his chase continues to get as close to 10th as possible. And just as we were saying about Stroll making a pit, both Stroll and Joe have pit there and we move up into sixth position how long can we hold on to that that is the question we'll be trying to answer <laughs> so we're past the halfway point now and as you can see Bottas was pretty quick in getting in front of us from the last update and he's jumped up to six we're still five seconds or so in front of Joe so pretty happy with that Stroll sitting down in 11th and he's where we expect to be um or who we expect to be fighting for that eighth position come the end of the race uh, a few guys in and around there, Sonoda and Piastri, in similar positions to Stroll and ourselves. So, yeah, there's lots to play for. Still can get points out of Gasly, I think, by the end of this race. And Ocon certainly doing his best to utilise these soft tyres as much as he can. And, yeah, we've just got to keep pushing and see where we end up by the end of this race. And a couple of laps later, we've managed to get an overtake from Ocon again. He's climbing his way up through the grid again. He's not make we've not made he's not made it easy for himself with the qualifying laps he's had, but he's making up for it with overtakes in this race. Um and he's managing to was that Gasly getting in front of somebody or was that overlapping somebody, I think? Um and again trying to open up this gap again to between ourselves and Joe. Um with a bit of a push on Gasly's tires. But again, Ocon doing really well, and he's now half a second behind Ricardo, um, fighting for twelfth now. And Perez comes in for his pit stop, and that puts Gasly up into fifth. And Perez going on to mediums. So both Russell and Perez on mediums to finish the race, I think. Because I think they were on hards to start with. We'll check the uh, we'll check the, the tyre history. Uh, Russell, yeah, he was on hards, as was Perez. So one stoppers coming in at this moment in time. Yeah, we'll see if we can use that to advantage and keep this gap up above ourselves and, and the chase and pack with Gasly. Again, DRS opens up and Ocon looking down the inside and pulling away up the hill in front of Ricardo. And that is a fantastic overtake again and gets us into 12. And quite important for us as well, nine seconds back on Stroll, who is on hard tyres. So can we get some pace on Ocon? to try and close the gap to Stroll and put some pressure on that Aston Martin driver to help Gasly out. We'll have to wait and see. And just as we get into lap 50, Gasly gets overtaken by Russell. But again, Gasly's held on to that for a lot longer than I thought he would, um, which is a good sign, I think, of things to come. And there's about a four-second gap between us and Joe. We'll see how long that lasts, because uh, Joe has been chipping away at it, and we've got about five laps to go before we get to the point of where we would pit Gasly in for that last stint of soft. So 
Yeah, Gazi doing really well and keeping the gap open to the guys behind. So the longer we can keep doing that, the better. But again, a few laps to go and we'll see if Shaw starts chipping away again. So we're up to lap 56 now. Ocon's coming in for his second pit stop, has a relatively clean one as well. And we're getting Gazi ready to push on the next lap because with him having slightly used soft tyres to use, I want to try and give him a couple less laps to have to operate with. Um, but he's doing really well to keep that gap to about two seconds over Joe. And again, the gap to hit between him and Stroll is about 10 seconds or so. Ocon's about 24 seconds back on Stroll, however, so it does look like points are out of the question for Ocon, but we'll certainly keep trying to push him as close as possible to the Canadian driver. And yeah, let's see what we can do with this last in on soft tyres. So there you have it then. Gasly comes out in 11th. He's going to be a few seconds back on Stroll. About six seconds back. With about 19 laps to try and make up. About... Yeah, he's got about nine lap, 19 laps to try and get into that top eight for that bonus. That's what we're looking to try and achieve and keep going because I think we have to get five races in a row. And if we achieve it, we get about two million. So obviously that helps us in terms of our ability to spend and upgrade um, the car as well as upgrade potentially facilities depending on how much we've got saved and accumulated. But Gazi making a really good effort so far. He's cut the time down to four seconds. Let's keep pushing and see what it can do. And a safety car has been deployed. So there was a crash. Be careful, safety four. car has been deployed. 17 laps to go. Okay. Everyone's going to be going on fresh softs. We've got 100% tyres left on Ocon, so we may as well put him on some. Gasly, what has he got left? Yeah, we may as well put him on his freshest tyres that we can possible. That, I mean, makes the most sense. Let's see what happens at the end. Oh, it's a red flag. Okay. Red flag, oh, red flag. that gives Stroll and Co. a big advantage. And it's Sergeant that's gone off and is blocked up the middle of the track. So Ocon will probably be feeling quite lucky because it's sliced down that big 10 second gap he had but Gasly on the other hand will be thinking could I be any more cursed so yeah we'll put him on the 93% tyres and we'll put Ocon on the 100% tyres and we'll see what we can do in these early stages and again perfect symmetry in the first 12 places of two Red Bulls, two McLarens, two Ferraris, two Alpines and two Aston Martins and then two Audi drivers so let's see if we can break that up a little bit and cause some mayhem in these last few laps and it's lights out and away we go and you can see the guys side by side with each other Ocon trying to find a way in front what are the tire? What people have? Everyone's gone for softs, so it's a, basically a sprint. It's a sprint race in Monaco, essentially. That's what we've got now. Let's see what we can do as Ocon gets in front of Gasly and is pushing on now. And again, this could be a really big day for Ferrari and McLaren. I don't know why it's telling lap cars to overtake when <laughs> it's been a full red flag, but there you go. And yeah. Fingers crossed we can make up some positions before the end of the race, but it's not going to be easy with everyone being on the same level of tyre now. And someone in the Mercedes garage is having a problem. Al is it Albon or Sainz? I can't see from the helmet, but that has disrupted us a little bit and slowed everyone up. And Leclerc seems to be having an issue. Okay, the times are dropping down, but never mind. I was getting a bit confused about what happened there, but we uh, we stay where we are as the two Aston Martins now squabbling for position for 9th and 10th. And Ocon thinking to himself, I wish I could just get my nose in front of these guys and make an overtake. Everyone all bunched up early on. 
As everyone's trying to overtake the lapped cars. I think that's what the issue is. I've never has anyone seen this before on F1 Manager? I've certainly never seen this before. I'm trying to see what's going on, but hard to tell really. Is Ocon trying to take advantage of the situation? Oh, there's a Williams car holding everyone up. So there's a lapped car that people can't get by, and that's causing the traffic. Bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. So I think the Williams car is trying to unlap itself, but the McLarens are staying on it, basically. Never really seen that before. That is new. I think the game might have glitched, quite possibly, because the Williams car keeps getting to the same point in every lap and trying to let the drivers go by, but no one's overtaking, like you can see here. And it's just slowing everything down, and of course, if, if no one's overtaking, it's kind of difficult to make a move. Verstappen's doing the typical Verstappen thing and just trying to barge his way through. We've dropped down to 12th and 13th now because of this. Um... Because of this bizarre scenario where no one's overlapping the Williams car. So, is someone going to overtake it here? Nope. Nope. This is definitely a glitch. This has to be a glitch. What are we doing? We're sort of following behind. Going to try and put one of the drivers on a more aggressive strategy and see if he can maybe jump up a few places. But it looks like this is what it's, how it's going to end for the next eight laps. And we're up into 8th now. I don't know what's happened. We've zoomed it on because I figured it was just going to stay in the same position. Let's look after these tires. But I think the stopping and starting I think is causing Gasly to maybe get a few places in front. But again, not much of a race to tell you about. Again, stop and starting. Stop and starting. Oh, it's a miracle no one's crashing here, to be fair. <laughs> This Williams car has a lot to answer for. Gasly's up into six right now. Down into seventh again. Who knows where we're going to end up. It's not really the race at this point, but... Hey-ho, we'll take seventh and tenth if that's how it stays, but... Again, I've never, ever seen it do this. And let me know in the comments if you've seen it, guys, because it's new to me. So, this is a situation we find ourselves in. We've put ourselves on aggressive, and we're now third, so... I don't know. I don't really know what to make of this, guys. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's a case of the Williams drivers trying to overtake, and the two things are started to sort of glitch together, and that's what's maybe causing the issues. But we're up into third. So final lap. Eventually, we get to final lap, and we'll see if we uh, can make some sort of overtake. Into 7th with Ocon. Ah, yeah. I don't know what else to think of it, guys. Um, yeah. It's <laughs> bizarre. I, uh, I have never seen this before, ever. Just watching them stop as Ocon gets into 5th. Just utterly bizarre. We're going from having no points to potentially getting a fourth and fifth here. Or third, maybe, if Sonoda holds, hold, doesn't hold on to it. But, yeah, I mean, that's it done and dusted. That's the race, fourth and fifth. Bizarre. Make of that what you will. Make of that what you will. Uh, bizarre. Bizarre. So we finished with 22 points. Feel a bit strange getting those points the way we did, but hey-ho. We move up to 5th and 7th in the drivers, constructors-wise. Back in front of Ferrari by 5 points. Yeah, bizarre. Bizarre, bizarre, bizarre. We get 6 points in the pit stop, and that keeps us solidly in 7th again. And yeah, we move on and try and forget this one as quickly as possible. And yeah, we 
maintain the run for our sponsorship money and we get almost three million in the bank as well so starting to save those funds up now um so got to start thinking about what we want to do next with that as we've got 14 million dollars in the tank to use so if we want to try and build a new facility or build an upgraded facility or refurbish some of them we can do but that will have to wait for the next episode as we move on to spain for round eight as always guys if you have enjoyed the episode despite that bizarre ending in monaco don't forget to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button if you do enjoy the series as much as i do um we are heading towards a thousand subscribers so any support in that regard would be greatly appreciated so yeah let's hope spain goes a little bit smoother than it did in monaco and yeah let's see if we can get some more points on the board there and yeah we'll see you in spain